today what I'm going to talk about is order flow. How to get the edge over other traders with order flow. Now, you know, everyone always talks about when you're trading, you, know, you always want to have an edge over the other traders because you know, at the end of the day, that's who you're competing against is other traders. So today, you know, you're in for a treat. I'm going to show you the easiest way to understand what's happening in the market. So you can make better trading decisions tomorrow, adding order flow to your existing method of trading. And my goal for you today is to help you determine if order flow trading is for you, to show you how to read order flow to find low risk trading opportunities, how to combine order flow with your current form of analysis for better trading opportunities. And lastly, I'm going to show you a trade setup that risks just three ticks per trade. You know, it's interesting because it, it happened yesterday, actually, in, in the crude oil. Um, there, was, there was a great example, and I'm going to show you show you that trade again. You know, everyone always says you gotta you gotta have low risk trades, you know, when you're trading. But you know, nobody really ever tells you how to go about finding those trades. And I'm going to show you how to do all this without tons of screen time. You know, you don't need. 10,000 hours of screen time to figure out what's going on in the market. Honestly, who has 10,000 hours? 10,000 hours is, is equivalent of five years of, of working full time. And without big mathematical manipulation of, of price, you know, VWAP or MACD or RSI, and without messy charts, you know, people, sometimes people think that the more that you add to a chart, the better your analysis will be. But at the end of the day, you know, you're just making things much more confusing for yourself. So I'm going to teach how to trade as a trader. And if you stick around to the end of the presentation, I got a special, a special gift for you today. It's my book that I wrote on order flow trading. It's 150 pages, um, you know, but you know that includes charts and everything. And it's written by myself, you know, a trader for other traders. If, if, if uh, you know, some people like to critique my grammar and, and spelling, but really, you know, it's about 95% grammatically correct and spelling correct. It's still, I get the occasional email of people saying, oh, you know, you spelled the word color wrong. It doesn't have a U. Well, you know, in English, in, in uh, English, English, it does have a U. Things like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, just, just keep it to yourself. Um, you know, I hate to sound cruel, but, you know, it, it's not easy to write a book. And, uh, you know, it's easier said than done. So, you know, if there's one thing about trading we can all agree that we hate about, it's risk. You know, you always want to reduce your risk in the markets, and order flow will help you do that. So I don't want you to take risks in your trading. You know, personally, I see risk and I run. You know, it, it doesn't take much to, to spook me out of the market. But, you know, if I, I like this picture, that's not me in the picture, fortunately. But, um, you know, if, if I saw a hippopotamus chasing me down the street, I'd, I'd sure as heck get, get out of there. So before we get started, you know, you got to ask yourself, you know, is trading for you? For some... Yes, it is. For others, no. Um, you know, I, I hate to be blunt about it, but you know, not not every line of business, not every line of work is for everybody. Um, you have to ask yourself: Are you willing to take action? You know, are do you want to be your own boss? When you're on your own boss, you don't always have a regular paycheck. You know, with trading, you don't have that regular paycheck coming into your bank account at the 15th and the 30th of the month. You know, you could have a bad period and, and you're losing money and actually money is going out of your account and coming in. You know, can you handle rejection? You know, can you handle the losing trades? You know, some people are able to handle it. Other people can't. And how does losing money affect your psychology? You know, after you start losing some money, you start getting angry at people, getting angry at your, you know, at your spouse, at your kids, at your parents. Um, you know, anybody around you, you know, gets the gets the brunt of it. So, you know, I mean, you have to ask yourself these questions, you know, is trading for you? So next, you know, to the next line of reasoning, you know, is order flow trading for you? You know, order flow trading is sort of a, you know, a niche part of, of trading. It, it appeals to short-term traders, intraday traders. And for some, yes, for others, no. Again, you know, if, if you're trading on four-hour charts, if you're a swing trader or you look at daily charts, you know, order flow is not going to benefit you very much. Um, it's really designed for short-term intraday trading. You know, are you willing to put in the time and effort to learn? You know, most people say they are, but really they aren't. You know, most people will watch this webinar for 40 minutes and, you know, tomorrow do nothing. They'll just go back to their current way of trading, you know, the current way of losing money in the markets and, 
you know, say, oh, you know, trading is so hard, the game is rigged. Well, you know, they're not taking the time to learn. You know, are you a tire kicker? Are you someone that just jumps from indicator to indicator looking for the holy grail? You know, order flow is not a holy grail. Order flow teaches you how to understand what really moves the market. You know, that's, that's the next point. Do you really want to understand what moves the market? The market moves by buying and selling, by supply and demand. You know, it's the law of supply and demand it's not the theory of supply and demand you know, this is how the market reacts it doesn't react because you know the, the 30 day moving average costs across the 200 day moving average no it, it moves because you know people's perception of value is a certain level and if we're not at that level we're going to move to find that level so briefly you know quickly who i am um you know my name is michael Valtos. i'm the founder of orderflows.com but before that I was vice president of futures trading at JP Morgan for eight years, at Commerce Bank for three years. You know, Commerce Bank's a big German bank. It used to be big, now all these banks in Germany are, seem to be going under. Cargill, if you're not familiar with Cargill, it's um, probably the largest privately held company in the United States. You know, they account for 25% of America's grain exports, about 30% of the meat exports. You know, they're everything, anything commodity-based. EDF Man, if you're English or European, you, you would know, you know, uh, you've heard of EDF Man. They've been around since the 1700s trading. Uh, they got their start trading sugar. You know, the, the last two, Cargill and EDF Man, you know, those are commodity trading companies. They've been around for hundreds of years. And again, you know, you don't last that long in the trading business for hundreds of years unless you're good at trading. And you know, I, I put this experience out there um, because you know, I want people to realize you know, who, who, who I am, who I am sharing this with them. You know, I, this, this is a legitimate background. It's not like you know, I graduated college and, and I did nothing and, and I got a couple books on trading and all of a sudden you know, I, I think I discovered how to make money. No, you know, this is what I did for a living for 20 years. You know, and I did it at the highest level. And now I'm sharing this information with you guys, you know, not to make money per se, but you know, I'm doing it because I think that, you know, that there is something of value and that people can get, you know, when I started in the business, you know, I had some very good instructors, some good teachers. I had access to many of the people that, that you'd read in Market Wizards. You know, those are people I dealt with on a daily basis. So again, you know, I don't want to talk about myself too much, but because uh, it's about you, not me. And I want to show you how order flow analysis Will help your trading in the least amount of time possible. Again, my goal is to get you from point A to point B as quickly as possible. You know, I, I don't want to say that it's going to take you how many years to run an order flow trade. No, you know, you should, by the end of this presentation, you should be peaked. And, you know, if, if you go through some of my materials, you know, within a couple of weeks, you should be trading with order flow pretty quick. So let me be clear, you know, order flow trading basically is, is about making decisions. You got to make trading decisions, do you get long, do you get short? And you know that that's how it is. It's not a red light, green light system, but when you understand order flow, you'll understand what's happening in the market and the decisions will actually become crystal clear. You'll understand what's going on in the market that it'll seem like it's a red light, green light system, but in, in actual, what you're seeing is how the market moves, you know, ebbs and flows, you know, when buyers are in control, when sellers are in control, when the market's transitioning from the supply driven market to a demand driven market. First, you know, a brief disclaimer before I jump in. It's, you know, this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract. You know, and, uh, where am I? Future trading contains substantial risk is not for every investor. A, an investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Um, risk capital is money that could be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You know, the reason why I have, there is a disclaimer, because um, I, I don't want people coming in thinking that this is a way to just, you know, print money. You know, trading is not like that. You know, trading is work. You know, the most successful traders, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, it takes them a while to find a way to trade that you know fits their personality and fits their risk profile so to speak so you know the three main reasons why most traders fail you know number one they take they don't understand the market you know plain and simple um, you know they, they think trading is about looking at throwing a bunch of indicators on the screen and you know taking trades because you're you're overbought or something like that you know that that's not trading that's why most people 
that's the number one reason why most people fail. They just understand what's going on in the market. Number two, they take on too much risk. They leverage themselves to the gills, and you know, after a small loss, next thing they know, their markets move against them, and, and they get below, and they blow out of the position, and then they think the market's rigged. You know, the broker blew them out. So you know, that's the second reason. Number two, three, they spend too much time learning and not enough time doing. You know, they spend their life in sim mode, but they don't actually trade. You know, they just sit there talking about trading, spending their times on the message boards, the forums, telling people, you know, what they're doing, what other people are doing wrong, rather than actually doing it themselves. Um, you know, so these are, to me, dealing with hundreds of traders over the last couple of years, you know, you know, retail traders, you know, these are the three main reasons that come up as to why traders fail. And, you know, I want to show you how using order flow will make your market analysis easier and simpler. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, is keeping things simple. You know, so if you, if you want to see how, you know, that's what you're here for, right? Okay. So order flow makes it easy to find hidden strength and weaknesses in the market. And how to determine if highs or lows are going to hold. You know, every time you get up to a, a new high or a new low, you know, you want to know, you know, is this level going to hold? You know, that's the questions that you should be asking yourselves, um, you know, when, when you hit the new high or new low, plain and simple. You know, always people always try to come up with, um, you know, big support resistance levels, but they, they overlook the most common, which is, you know, the day's high and low. You know, th those are the, the, the basic levels you could be trading around during the day. Waterfall gives you market generated support and resistance levels. You know, there's not many other forms of analysis that's going to give you market generated levels, and Waterfall does. And in blue, you know, how do you determine if price is being rejected? You know, I put this in blue because you know this is the most important one. You know, you want to know when price moves to a certain level, is price going to be accepted? Or is price going to be rejected and we're going to move away from there? You know, if price is going to be accepted, we'll just go sideways. But if price is going to be rejected, you're going to have a move. And that's what, you know, that's what you want to look for. So, again, you know, what makes order flow different is this information is not available on a normal bar or candlestick chart. It's available on an order flow footprint chart. And, you know, if you're not familiar with what an order flow footprint chart, this is what it looks like. Yes, it looks messy. But at the end of the day, it makes perfect sense to people that understand the order flow. Again, it doesn't take you weeks or months to understand what the hell is going on. It, it's just once you understand what you're looking at, it makes perfect, makes, it's very clear. It's like reading music, you know, on, on a piece of paper. Um, you know, the three main things to focus on are point of control, which is the point in the bar with the most volume. In each bar, it'll have a box around it. That's the point of control. The delta, which is on the bottom, which tells you the net difference between buyers or sellers, and that's important because, you know, if it's positive, the market should be moving up. If it's negative, the market should be moving down. And, you know, there are times where it diverges. And lastly, you know, imbalance is, you know, when one side, buyers or sellers are being overly aggressive, you know, and it's highlighted by red numbers if, you know, it's a selling imbalance, as you can see in the bars, or blue numbers if it's buying imbalances in the bars, you know, the ratio between the bid and the offer, um, you know, markets are, are two-way auctions, right? There's a bid, there's an offer, and, you know, more aggressive buyers will, will buy more on the offer, buy as much as they can if they think the market's going higher, oftentimes that leads to an imbalance. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about is something that I've been the innovator in this uh, as far as order flow goes is the ratios, the numbers you see above or below a bar. And, you know, on a green candle, it'll appear at the bottom. On a red candle, it'll appear on top. If the number is blue, it's a number that's of interest. It, it, it basically it takes the volume traded at the bottoms of the bars or the tops of, you know, the bottoms of up bars or the tops of red bars. And it just, you know, it just and does the analysis for you. It, it's not some big algo thing. You know, people have copied this, these ratios and, and put it out there as, you know, as some order flow algorithm number, you know, blah, 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 which is just pure crap. They're just taking my idea and, and using it. You know, I don't mind that people take my idea, but at least give me credit for it. Just don't steal my idea and try to pawn it off to other people as, you know, something brand new that only they, they've come up with. But again, you know, what's important is you're looking for blue numbers either at the bottom of the bars or at the top of the bars. The black numbers are just your, your average 
order flow numbers. You know, not every bar has something special in the order flow. What you're looking for are the bars that have something of interest. And you know, when I launched the order flows trader, I created what I call the ratios. Now, when I say I created, I used to do it in my head or when the number was close, I'd do it on a calculator. Um, but you know, I'm the first one to incorporate it into the order flows chart. You know, as far as I know, I was the only one using it actually. But you know, over time, you know, more people have started using it. And you know, ratios, why they're important is they're gonna help you determine if price levels are being rejected or defended defended. And there's two types. There's a ratio bounce high, which indicates prices are being rejected, and a ratio bounce low, which indicates price is being rejected. I'm not going to get into the intricacies, the difference of the two. Really what you're interested in is a blue number as opposed to a black number. So, you know, the ratios will appear at the top of down bars, red bars. They'll appear at the top, you know, as you can see here, at the top, at the top, at the top of red bars, or at the bottom of green bars, green candles, you know, up bars, as you can see down here, um, you know, underneath the green bars. Again, the blue number, blue ratio number is a number that's important to take notice of. A black one is just your normal order flow. And doji candles, you know, candles that open and close at the same price level, there's no ratio above or below it. So I don't think there's a flaw in the software. It's it's not, it's just, you know, I, I have found that, you know, doji candles, candles that open at the same, open and close at the same price level, sort of have, I don't say no influence on order flow, but, you know, are kind of neutral. Uh, just leave it at that. Neutral, in, at least in my analysis. Again, you know, my software automatically plots these uh, numbers above or below the above or below, you can adjust, you know, how you want the number, you know, the setting for the ratio. Again, you know, I have, if you're more interested in the ratios, I've done other presentations on them, and there's information on my website more about them. But really what you want to do is you want to watch ratios at highs of days, lows of days, swing highs, and swing lows, because that's, you know, you're looking for an area where the market's going to turn. Now, I'm not trying to pick highs and lows. You know, I'd be a fool to do that, but, but if, if we're going to go up to a high and start turning, yeah, I'm going to be interested in it. I'm not going to pick the exact high, but if there's signs, there's signs of price rejection, it'll show up in the order flow often. And you can see here, this is the five years. We got this new high right here, and it, what did the market do? It sold off from that high all the way down to one tick above the low where you got a bullish ratio, and it starts moving higher. And, you know, ratios, if you can trade around them, and you know, once you understand them, it's going to give you very low risk trading opportunities because you can get long like here's a ratio a swing low a bullish ratio you know at this other swing low you don't have a, a blue number you just have your average it's a 19 it's a black number it's just your normal order flow number you know but the ratios highlight things to you that's of note so you know if you're getting long in the next bar off of this ratio right here you know, your stop is right behind you know, right behind this this low, so you're only risking this little bit, you know, from um, you know 9.39, you know, and three quarters to you know 9.38 and a half or 9.38 and a quarter. So you're risking, you know, four or five ticks, five ticks, you know, for what? You know, for for twice as much as much profit. So you know, that's how ratios, you know, using order flow can help give you low risk entries you know for example here you know if you got your high you swing high you got your ratio you got divergence you know again if you're not familiar with what divergence is go to my website you can read all about it and we start coming off so again you know if you're getting short you know after this bar you know you could have a very low risk rate because you know your stop is just going to be right behind this high and you're getting in you know right here you know 117 22 and three quarters your stop is at 117.24 so, you know, that, that's that's five ticks. And, you know, this is, you know, about a 15, 20 tick move. You know, are you willing to risk this little bit to get this big move? You know, that's what you gotta ask yourself. So, let me ask you another question. You know, what method are you using in your trading today? And secondly, would you like to improve your results? You know, most people come 
to me. You know, they've already traded for a while. I, I, I get very few people that are literally brand new to the markets that are like a, a fresh slate. You know, most people have been trading for a while. I'm sure some of you have. And you have a way of trading. You know, Bollinger Bands is, is a great example. You know, now the, the, the hot topic for people to to trade around is, is uh, what is that, VWAP. And, and really, people are misusing VWAP. They don't even know it. You know, VWAP is basically being uh, put out there as you know some great thing in in the market. You know, people even trade you know one standard deviation, two standard deviation with VWAP. But you know, they're, they're completely misunderstanding how to use VWAP. You know, they're they're basically using VWAP as a bastardized um, moving average. You know, that's how they're using it. They might as well just go ahead and use a moving average. Yeah, ask any institutional trader how VWAP is used, and you know it'll it'll shock you. you know, VWAP is really designed, and let's say designed, but VWAP is used as a method of measuring trade execution. You know, you you got ten thousand, you're you're a big trader, you got ten thousand e-minis to buy over the next fifteen minutes. You compare where you're filled at over those fifteen minutes to the VWAP for that fifteen minutes. You don't compare it to the VWAP for the entire day. That would be that would be nonsense. Um, you know, but if, if you're looking at VWAP going back to the entire session, you know, as you start trading more and more, your VWAP number is going to get flatter, right? So, you know, really, you know, people are, are putting it out there like, and it, 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 it bothers me actually a bit because, you know, the way people are putting it out there is like it's some secret thing that, you know, only, you know, the, the top traders use. That, that's bullshit. Um, you, you can only look at VWAP as a measurement of when your ex, your trade has been executed, um, you know, it, it doesn't make any other any sense. Otherwise, you know, you're, you're using volume, you know, from a time when you, you know you weren't even in the market. You technically you're using volume for how many hours ago? Um, it, it just doesn't make sense. But you know, Bollinger Bands is something that you know most people are familiar with, and you know, if you're not familiar with it, it's it's probably you know this is basic Bollinger Band information here. Again, it's not a presentation of Bollinger Bands, but I'm using it as an example. And it's most technical base traders are familiar with it, you know, but it's not, as most people believe, you know, something that gives you absolute buy or sell signals based on price touching the bands. Um, you know, again, you know, people that trade on VWAP say, oh, you know, we're going to have a reversion to the mean. Um, and to a certain extent, you know, people also trade with Bollinger bands think that you hit the upper band or the lower band, and then you either got to buy or sell. You know, rather, what they do is what the bands do is you know they answer the question of whether prices are high or low on a relative basis. You know, with that information, you know, the trader can make the buy or sell decisions by using Bollinger bands to confirm price. Now, this just isn't my definition. This is John Bollinger's definition. John Bollinger is the guy that created the Bollinger bands. And okay, so for example. Okay, here, uh, before you jump in. So you got your Bollinger, you got your upper band, you got your lower band. You know, and the market's moving lower, you're still going to, you know, be hugging that lower band on a market that's moving lower. If the market's moving higher, you'll be hugging the upper band. But, you know, at what point, you know, are you going to look to be a buyer? You know, and that's where order flow comes in, right? You know, if, if you try to buy it just because, you know, you, you broke through the lower band and you start to rally a bit, you think, hey, I should buy it. Well, you would have lost here you would have lost here you got doji here you would have lost here this one you know now you have a ratio now you got something now you have something solid that you can use in your analysis so you know a couple of quick examples with with order flow and bollinger bands you know again it doesn't have to be bollinger bands you know use it with your existing way of trading you know again you know, people use people have adapted order flow to their style of trading that already have an existing way of trading and, and they're happy with it, but they really want to refine their entries or, um, you know, cut out some of their losers. You know, that's where order flow is going to help you out a lot. Um, you know, said so if, if you could refine your entries and get rid of a few extra of your losing trades, you know, that could be the difference. You know, that could be all the difference it takes to, you know, turn you from a mediocre break even, you know, small profit, um, small profitable trader to a, a more profitable consistent trader. So for example here we're hugging the, the upper band of the Bollinger Bands. You know, the upper band is here, the lower band is the lower one and the center line is, is the black number. So, you know, so you're going up, up, you know, you, you got your first 
down candle, your first down bar as you're, you know, you're trading on the upper end of the bar of the band. And then this one here, you know, you break through it and you've got a ratio. Again, you know, these ratios indicate price rejection. So if you know you're trading up here and you got price rejection just outside the upper band, you can be fairly confident in getting short, okay? Say you don't believe it. Say, ah, you know what, you know, ratios, that's nonsense. All of a sudden here, you got a stack selling imbalance right off the top of the bar, uh, right at the top band. So, you know, you got a couple of things. One, you got price rejection. Two, you got aggressive sellers. You got a stack selling imbalance. And what do you do? You trade from the upper band all the way down to the lower band, where again, you get a ratio indicating um, price rejection down here below, you know, around the lower, where the lower band is at this moment. And you see how we rally back up again. Again, you know, this is crude oil. The previous one was, what was that? That was bonds. This is crude oil. It's an eight range chart. You know, I'm a big proponent of using range-based charts as opposed to time-based charts because, you know, I like to see how markets move from prices rather than markets, you know, it's 1025, it's time to form a new bar like that. But again, you can still use it with, with time-based charts. But this is a range-based chart. And, you know, we got this higher here. We start coming off. And you got a ratio here. Again, you got stack selling and balance, and you sell off from this high, this upper band, right down to the lower band. You know, you do got one one test right here. It does come back up before selling off. But again, you know, you're, you're showing the signs of the price rejection up there in the order flow. And you know, just to follow up, you know, this is a minute chart. This is a five minute e mini chart, and you can see. We're going lower, going lower. We bust through this lower band, okay? But then in the next bar, you know, it's a green, it's an up candle. It's a green candle. You got a ratio here that's blue, a blue number. So you're already you're thinking, hey, you know, there's some price rejection down here, you know, below this, this lower band that, you know, we can start rallying from this, you know? And even in the next bar, you're seeing, you know, the same things. You're seeing more price rejection down here and you move from the, the lower band, you know, all the way up into, you know, the center area of the Bollinger Bands. So again, you know, when a market's moving, you know, when it's trending, you're gonna be testing the, either the, if it's trending down, you're gonna be testing the lower band all the way down. But if you can have a, have a level, you know, based on the order flow, you know, what you're seeing that is giving you a sign to buy, it's gonna give you, a, a better entry than rather than just saying, oh, you know what, I got my first sign of, of a bounce here, I, I should get long, but there's nothing in the order flow telling you to get long. Just as here, nothing really telling you to get long. It's not, the, you know, this one, nothing, it's a doji, you know, it's a doji candle, but still, you know, it's not that you get down here that you got a, a buying opportunity. So again, you know, why suffer a loss here and a loss here and a potential loss here when you can have a, a refine your entry, you know, way down here, you know, you're cutting out, you know, two or three bad trades. So, you know, the main thing of this presentation is is my three tick trade setup. And you know, is it possible to trade with very small risk? You know, with order flow, yes, it is. Why? Well, because you know a level that you can safely hide behind when taking a position in the market. And what I'm going to talk about now is is the three tick stop setup, or what I like to call the O2X trade. And again, you know, this is yesterday in the crude oil. And this is. Um, this was around nine o'clock. You know, we have the high right here. You got a ratio, so indicating uh, price rejection or price defense, depending on you know, what the ratio number is. We come off a bit, rally back up towards that high, and then we get the sell-off. You know, from 52.83 all the way below 52.60. You know, so that's over a 20 tick, um, 20 tick profit. And again, you're just risking three ticks. You know, why is it called the O2X? Well, quite simply, you know, you have your high with the ratio. That's you put a circle. You circle that, you know, on, on, theoretically on your chart. You look for a pullback within two ticks of this high. That's the two. And the X is, you know, on the old treasure maps. You know, X marks marks the spot. You know, so it's down here. So you know, your O2X. And you know, the rules are just talk about the, the rules for the, the three ticks stop trade is, 
you should be trading at a daily high or daily low, or you know, if you're very confident in your trading, you know, the swing high or swing low. Me personally, I, I stick to the daily high or daily low, and you should have a ratio bounce high or a low, which indicates price rejection. You know, ratio bounce high indicates price rejection. Ratio bounce low indicates price defense. And what you do is you place your limit order to get into the market. If you're at the high, you place it place it two ticks off that high or two ticks off the low to get into the trade. You, know, you can be getting in on a pullback. And you place your stop three ticks away from your entry. So, you know, for example, if this is an example here, um, you know, the low is 23.30 and a quarter. So your stop, you, you got your ratio bonds low, you know, the blue number there. And so your stop is three ticks off the slow, one, two, three. So you know it's the area in between these two blue numbers or these two blue bars at 23.30 spot 75, and your stop just goes three ticks away. You know basically below the slow. Again, you know you don't have to use three ticks. You could use four ticks, five ticks. But you know, for me, I, I like to keep it simple. Three ticks is is tight enough. You know I don't like to let the trade go too far against me. Um, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, but again, you know, if you're trying to get in on a pullback, sometimes there's a little bit more to the pullback. It doesn't necessarily come right back within two ticks of the the higher or the lower, then make its move. Sometimes it gets, you know, two or three ticks through the level. Like in this case, you had two ticks through the level. But if we had three ticks, you know, I probably don't want to be in that trade because you can make a new highs or new lows. And you know, it's it's a way of you know if. if People talk about price action a lot, you know, watch double tops, double bottoms, but you know they don't really define on define you how to how to take advantage of them. Um, and order flow is a way that's going to filter it. So you know you put your your limit in here at 23 and three quarters. You get the pullback. It goes two ticks through. Okay, you know you take a little bit of heat. You know two ticks drawdown is not a whole heck of a lot. It rallies back up, comes back in, tests that level. And you know, let me, I had to put this on two charts because it's a bit spread out. You know, when you're looking at an order flows chart, um, you know, the data is, is a bit wider. But this is, you know, this bar right here at the end is this bar right here in the middle. So the second time you hit it, you, know, you then you get the big move. You know, lots of times you don't even get all this garbage in between. Um, you know, you, you come in, you hit it, then you make the move. In this case, you hit it, you get in goes up and then comes back down, tests the level again, and then makes the move. Lots of times you don't get that. Sometimes you do. You know, the market is, is, you know, people always say the market's fractal, but honestly, you know, the market moves, it's going to do what it wants to do. Um, in general, things, yes, things look the same, but oftentimes it's not as um, fractal as, as people would have you believe. So, you know, ask yourself, you know, you're getting in here at 23 and three quarters. Your stop is here at 23, 30. So you're risking three ticks. You know, are you willing to risk this little bit right here, these three ticks, to catch this move here? You know, from 23, 30 and three quarters, all the way up to you know 23, 34 and three quarters. So you're risking three ticks to get you know four points, you know, 16 ticks. So you know, <laughs> I, I think personally, I think it's a no-brainer. Again, it doesn't happen every single day in every market. It may not happen, and you know, it happened yesterday in crude. I haven't looked too much at the market this morning, but again, you know, it doesn't happen in every market every day. You know, it might go one or two days without it happening, and you know, all of a sudden the next day you get it happening twice. It really depends on what the market is doing and, and the flow. Now, before you get all excited and you know, mortgage the house and you know, sell your car and your, your motorcycle. Sometimes it fails, okay? It's not a 100% go to the bank trade setup that's gonna happen, be correct all the time. But again, it's about limiting your risk. You know, this is a, an example where it failed. You know, you got your low, you got the ratio that you like, and it just came right back on the next bar. And then the next bar, you know, two bars later, it stopped you out. You know, that's, that's the markets. You know, you know, the market's gonna do what it wants to do. You can't, uh, you can't necessarily fight it. But again, you know, you've got this little risk here, three ticks to catch this big move here. You know, and again, you, you should, you saw it on the crude as well. You know, you're risking, you know, you, your, your limit to get in is just right here, 52.83. And over the next, you know, 
five, six bars, you sell off by over 20 ticks. You know, so when it happens, it's a great trade. When it stops you out, that's fine. You know, move on. You know, there'll be other trading opportunities. So can you see how powerful order flow analysis is? Do you think it's difficult or easy? You know, honestly, I, I think it's easy after you know what to look for. Now, I'm a big believer in keeping it simple, and order flow is about as simple as it gets. I, I don't like to clutter my screens. You saw how cluttered my screens were. They weren't very cluttered. You know, it's just the volume footprint chart, you know, some ratios. Maybe once in a while, I've got an indicator on there that I've developed. But other than that, it's not very complex. So if you found this helpful, you'll really like my order flow trader software package. It's really what I consider the fastest and easiest way to trade with order flows. You should choose consistency and control in your trading. You know, people always, you know, the biggest problem that people face is they're not consistent in their trading. And you know, order flow will help make you consistent because you'll understand what's happening in the market. And it's not based on luck or being special. You know, trading is never based on luck or being special. There's times when I don't want to say luck isn't involved in trading. You know, there are there is times when you know the market moves within a tick of your stop or within a tick of your take profit and then moves away. You know, that's just bad luck. That's just unfortunate. But you know, in life, those things have a way of evening out. And once you understand what's happening in the market, it just makes perfect sense. So again, you don't have to spend 10,000 hours of screen time, you know, taking unnecessary risks, and most importantly, wasting your money. I don't know what's worse, wasting your money or wasting your time. Um, you know, I, I put an equal value on on time and money. You know, if if you can't pick up order flow within a couple of weeks, you know, order flow is not for you. For some people, it's going to click and it's going to make perfect sense to them. Those are the people that will benefit. Again, I'm not saying you know, you know buy my software and, and it'll make a guarantee you become a winner. If if you want to understand and you want to understand what's going to happen in the markets, then you know order flow is for you. It's like the naval rescue divers. You know, you ask them, you know, who do you save first? You know, when when they a ship turns over in the ocean and everyone is there treading water trying to stay alive, you know, the guy's got to make a decision. Who's he going to save first? He can't save everybody at once. He's going to save the people that swim to him. You know, those are the people he's going to save. You know, so are you going to make the effort and you know try and save yourself by swimming to the rescue swimmer? You know, those are the people that are going to benefit from having a rescue swimmer in the water. Those are the people that are going to be saved first. You know, first a brief back backstory about myself. You know, I've been in the futures business for 20 years, but before I got into it, I was managing a grocery store. There's nothing wrong with that. It was decent money, but you know, I had to make a decision. You know, do I want to be managing a grocery store manager the rest of my life or not? You know, I have friends that are still in the grocery business. You know, we still talk to this day. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, I got friends that are truck drivers. You know, it's, you have to make the decision yourself. Do you want to become a trader? You know, that's what I made the decision in 1991, you know, after I graduated college, that I, I want to be a trader. So I had to do the only way you could do it at the time is you go down to the exchange and you get a job on the floor for basically minimum wage. I was making 25 cents above minimum wage at the time um, you know, as a runner uh, working for Dean Witter. I slept on my brother's couch for, for three months. And again, you know, you have to break your old habits if you want to make a change. You know, that's why I put together this package. You know, everything I talked about for the last 40 minutes will be completely useless if you go back to your old habits of doing what doesn't work knowing you have a job to pay your bills. Um, you know, sometimes you know, people have that safety net and they don't want to take take the chance. I'm not saying go quit your job and start trading, but you know, at some point, you know, you got to make that decision. You know, do I want to become a trader? And you have to look for a way, you know, get the education that is going to give you the opportunity to become a trader. So, you know, that's why I created the order flow traders, order flow trader software package. So if you want to do this, it, you know, if you're ready to see how to do this for yourself, you know, that's you know, that's who I want to work with, you know, people that really want to learn. And I created the Orderflow's Trader software package, and it runs on NinjaTrader. There's an NT7 version and NinjaTrader 8 version. Okay, I use the NT7 version. 80% of NinjaTrader users are still on NT7. They're pushing out NT8 on people, but most people are on NT7 still. And then we also have a Sierra Charts version. If you're interested in it, email me. And what it is, it's the volume footprint chart, and there's four pre-programmed order flow indicators in there. The ratios, which I showed you in this webinar earlier, are programmed in there. And there's a few other ones, trap traders, and a few other things. 
again, that, that's a whole nother webinar. And you also get my chart templates so that you can get up and running quickly. You know, but having order flow software is one thing. You gotta know what to do with it. And I don't just give you the software and send you on your way. I provide a lot of follow-up education so you can learn how to trade with order flow. And what I give you, what I'm gonna give you is access to my order flows trading course. I sell this on a website for $297. I'm gonna give it to you for free when you purchase the software. And it's 20 lessons, 20 video lessons. You could watch it in the middle of the night. You could binge watch it over the weekend. It's 15 hours of video instructions on order flow. So if you have no background whatsoever in order flow, it will get you up to speed. Another thing which is extremely valuable to a lot of people is you get the order flows trade room. You get access to it, free access for life, as long as I run it. And normally I, I used to offer it to the public for $2.99 a month. I cut it off to the public. I just use it for my own traders, traders using our software. And, you know, it's a place where I talk about what I see in the order flow for that morning or, you know, what happened in the afternoon the day before. Again, you know, normally it's two ninety nine a month. I got people still accessing the room that have bought it in, you know, bought the software in 2015. So, you know, one month is, is 299, one year is through three, three and a half thousand. Um, you know, so when you start adding this together, you know, 899 for the trader software, 297 for the course, 299 for the month, that's already, a thousand, you know, $1,400. And a special bonus, which I didn't talk about, but it's three additional order flow indicators, what I call the, the Vaultless Flip, the Vaultless Transition, and the Vaultless U-Turn. Normally I sell these indicators for $650. Today I'm gonna give it to you for free, free with the software. It runs on NT7 though, not on NT8 yet. Hopefully we'll get it on NT8, um, you know, within a week or two. But, you know, this is not something that's gonna last forever. This bonus is gonna last for the next two days. So again, you know, already you're looking at, at $2,000. People think, oh, I don't have $2,000. Well, you're not gonna pay that. And it's just a one-time payment of 999. And there's no other payments, you know, there's no monthly fees or anything like that. It's just, again, it's, it's a one-time payment that you pay me, that's it. There's no other payments in the future. You know, any updates you get for free. And, you know, when I say no other payments, you obviously you, you gotta pay for your, your data and you gotta pay for things like, um, you know, your, your NinjaTrader software subscription. But you know what, they have a free version which it runs on. And, you know, so you don't need the paid version. And, you know, just you know, really quick, what other people are saying is, you know, Hey Mike, this is great. You know, I didn't write this. You know, these are some of my users. Um, you know, so if folks don't see the value in what you're sharing, they're missing the point. You know, the positives are on the table and are massively valuable for any trader that's willing to learn trading as a career. Well, put it in perspective. What can you spend a thousand dollars on? You could buy the new iPhone 7 Plus. And I know the Samsung recently came out, but you know, I think iPhone is better than Samsung. It's not going to explode in your pocket. So, you know, act now, ask yourself what you're gonna do, what's the action you're gonna take. You know, go to www.orderflows.com slash webinar, and I'll take you to this page right here. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page, click on the button that says, let me in. You know, if you want the NT7 version, personally, I'm, on still, I'm still on NT7, most of my users are, but some people like the NT8 version. Personally, I'm, I'm a, I love NT7. Um, and you should join order flows today because you can see the power of order flow analysis and how it can change your trading or you want to understand what's happening in the market. You're excited to find low risk trading opportunities and you want a life of freedom and fulfillment. I mean, you don't want to be trading if you're losing money consistently. I mean, you know, there's, there's other things to do with your time than, you know, try and make money. You know, if, if you're not making money in the markets, you, know, you should reassess what you're doing in the markets, you know, stop trading. And you know, as promised, if you want a copy of my book on order flow trading, email me, mike at orderflows.com with the subject line, send me your book. So, you know, act now. Here's the link, the link's in the chat box, www.orderflows.com slash webinar. And, you know, thanks everyone. And I hope to hear from you and, and see you on the inside.